Carolyn has a question here. Seeing posts on Facebook and hearing news alerts locally of cyanobacteria blooms in local ponds, is this a seasonal occurrence? Are there usually other causes that can be observed and corrected to reduce such blooms? Are there other uses for a dangerous algae bloom? How can I, the problem is the solution, this situation? I'm on the shoreline of one of our irrigation dams that gets drawn down as we use the water. And I'm next to a swivel pipe that I can feed water up down into a swell that's got a big food forest on, but only when we're when the water's high enough. Around the shoreline is this green tide line of material. Um, and you might think it's an algae, but it's actually lemna. It's a duckweed that is beneficial. It's a, a great mulch and, and it's quite a good animal feed. Um, we've got a shoreline with with lots of plants just inside the water line there that have been saturated. They've been swamped with water when the water was up recently because before that the water was down and uh, the dam was almost empty in the big drought. And then it grew quite a few uh, plants in there. Most of them sort of weedy type species. Then it got flooded and they went underwater and it looks kind of messy. It doesn't look that attractive. But this is typical of some of your irrigation dams. They're going to go up and down depending on weather, um, depending how much drawdown you've got of irrigation. Um, and during the really big drought this year that's just gone, um, which was uh, unusual that we had no rain in January and February, normally our summer wet season, we had nine out of 25 dams drawn right down. We still had plenty to go. Um, but what we're looking at here is a natural sort of decomposition process and plant assemblies, floating plants and sort of not such clear looking water because of these shifting tide lines. Now, a lot of people would look at that and think there was algae involved. Um, there's no dangerous algae involved. I'm sure there's algae involved because all you need is sunlight and organic matter and there's plenty of rotting organic matter there. Um, so generally it's beneficial algae um, and that's all creating actually quite a life rich event and I'm sure there's a build up of soil on the bottom of the dam that we're going to have to harvest 10 to 20 years away to keep the depth but if you're getting any kind of dangerous algae you want to make sure you've got it identified the problem is going to be in the catchment. What's coming in from the catchment that's taking it out of the natural balance into an unnatural event. Now, it could be an oversupply of nutrient runoff from animals. It could be different toxins coming in from agriculture, or it could be coming in from industry runoff somewhere. Or it could just be some pollutant coming from a landfill or something but there's something that's feeding the situation to create the bloom. Now, it's most likely to really occur if you've got a deep enough dam, more than two meters deep, when it, the layers turn. So that happens at the change of season, particularly from the cooler months to the warmer months. In the springtime, you get the cooler layers at the bottom, and the top layer warming quickly and you get a bit of an exchange of water from top to bottom and you'll get all kinds of natural occurrences of microorganisms from the mud on the bottom the organisms that are engaged in soil creation at the bottom of the water the anaerobic organisms coming up to the top and it looks like an algae bloom but this is also the time when you're going to get more potential runoff events, unnatural runoff events, causing a bloom as the water, uh, a bad bloom of algae as the water warms up. So you're going to have to track what's happening in the catchment. And then you're going to have to put in filtration ponds, like your reed beds, which will take out toxins, depending how much is coming in, what, what type of 
toxin is coming in and, and what volume. You know, stack up little ponds uphill that don't have to be sealed. They can just be unsealed pond, ponds, holes really, full of gravel, right? And, and reed roots sat in the gravel, sitting there in the, in the dampness. As runoff comes, they bloom, they filter the, the, the nutrient or the toxin in the water on the way through the runoff event. So you really it's a matter of setting up your filtration sponges that take out the toxins, bond them in the carbon to the bodies, mostly of reeds, which then can go through a decomposition cycle and get completely locked up. That's what it's about. It's about identifying you've got a problem, checking the catchment, looking at the runoff, interrupting it. You can even put um, swale systems in that are filled with wood chips or gravels and, and, and planted to sop crop type systems. Willows, bamboos, often a lot of native species that grow around wetter areas, swampy areas, will sop up the nutrients, sop up the toxins, take out those plumes of unnatural runoff towards your water bodies and stop the algae and stop the, the unnatural algae. And, and this is all part of our job. This is what we do as designers and consultants. We make an analysis on those systems and put in the, the, the fil natural filtration, which is then building carbon and beneficial carbon in, in our systems. And, and, the, and the toxins and excess nutrient is bonded in those long chain molecules and becomes inert and actually is then evenly diluted and you're building carbon and stabilizing the system anyway so it, the problem becomes a solution by applying the right design elements.